I'm very pleased to uh, welcome Jeff Angel, uh, sitting in Buss's seat, Director of the Total Environment Centre here in Sydney, who's worked for decades uh, to advance environmental policies and stewardship nationally. He's the National Director and Convener of the Boomerang Alliance, which is a group of uh, 31 NGOs. To our European counterparts, it might seem uh, strange that we f f find ourselves having perhaps fought for decades to put 10 cents on the can of uh, drink so that it can encourage a, a take back and uh, the container deposit legislation, even though from South Australia it's been active for a long time. The New South Wales government recently here has uh, committed to uh, rolling it out. So the question to, to Jeff is, how can this raising of awareness of stewardship in the community <coughs> will be coupled with reverse vending machines, be a stepping stone to jobs, opportunities and innovation uh, around circular flows of resources. So it's really a where to next. Uh, thanks. <clears throat> I do want to make, um, having coming from the environmental campaigning field and having done it for a while, <clears throat> two comments about inertia and systemic change. And I think there are four elements that have to be mobilised to overcome inertia, and the container deposit campaign is somewhat of an example of that. Uh, the first is to move the community from passive to active supporters. Uh, and I mean active both in a political and behavioural sense. Uh, Political, of course, is you know, the role of NGOs in doing campaigning and convincing the community to take political action. In a behavioural sense, it's absolutely important they have the tools to implement their aspirations, their environmental and recycling or circular economy aspirations. And uh, that, of course, is supplied by business. They invest in the new technology uh, the new uh, uh, source separation or other types of technological practices that can actually deliver the recycling mechanisms to the community and, and, and other businesses. Uh, thirdly, that one has to overcome the issue of free riders and inherent in our political system is often uh, a protective, a protective attitude to existing industries. But of course, if you have free riders, then you can't have a systemic change in a business sector. And we are currently uh, uh, looking at that in the case of handheld batteries, where you know people, the majority of business, big businesses who want to do the right thing, don't want free riders, therefore they want a regulatory imposition on their industry. Uh, and fourthly, the other tool of inertia or a narrow cost benefit analysis which tend to overstate the costs because they're looking at the costs on established uh, uh, industries and they understate the benefits uh, partly due to methodological problems but also because they just start putting those benefits in the future on an equal basis or a better basis than current uh, uh, benefits from established industry and narrow cost-benefit analysis is frankly an anti-regulatory tool. Uh, all of this is epitomised in the <coughs> container deposit battle that we've, uh, after about 12 or 13 years, almost saw the end, seen the end of in New South Wales and possibly Queensland. <coughs> and uh, the container deposit battle was more than about containers and litter. And this is one of the things we've had to overcome in that, in that uh, industry opponents and some governments would try to frame it as simply about a small part of the litter problem or a small part of the recycling challenge. The fact is that a modern container deposit system, as I'm sure the Europeans here know, involves reverse vending machines. They massively increase the convenience of returning those containers for the incentive of getting the 10 cent deposit back. But those reverse vending machines can also take other products. And in the last few months, we've been approached by a number of business groups. Uh, for example, the battery people. Why can't we use reverse vending machines to return batteries? All you've got to do is read the barcode. The, uh, 
And that will be a massive change in Australia to introduce that new technology. Uh, we also upcycle curbside. The fact is a lot of the containers are in commingled bins, bins in curbside and they're contaminated and they have a low value. And therefore, once you separate them out into a container deposit stream, they're much cleaner and have a much higher value and they foster a better, higher value recycling industry. Uh, it also boosts the commercial sector because when the commercial sector buys these containers and pays the 10 cent deposit, they're going to want their 10 cent deposit back. Well, that will create a transport infrastructure uh, to collect those containers and they may as well take the uh, plastic and cardboard as well. So we are creating a systemic change in some important parts of uh, 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 waste and upcycling efforts. The things that actually trigger that systemic change, and certainly the circular economy is a concept of systemic change, is fundamentally community support, mobilising the community to push governments to overcome vested industry interests and to achieve that political support and political critical mass where you get the momentum for systemic change. Thanks, Jeff. Excellent.